All right, I want to share one Bible verse with you and sort of detail it, right? So we're in John 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. Okay, first of all, this is Jesus talking. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, He that hears my word, excuse me, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. Hath everlasting life is present tense. That means right now you have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. That means you can't be condemned for anything at all. But is passed from death unto life okay so uh, first of all you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that means you have everlasting life that means you are born of God so if we go to John 3 Jesus says verily verily I say unto you or say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the Spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, <clears throat> he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So being born of the water means being born from the water of your mother's womb. And being born of the Spirit means being born from the Spirit of God, which is from above. That which is, excuse me, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. All right, so think about that. See, so you're born of the Spirit of God. That means you have God, the Spirit of God, inside of you. And you shall not come into condemnation. You can't be condemned for anything after you're born of the Spirit of God. And it says, but is passed from death unto life. So when you are passed from death unto life, you cannot then return back to death. Otherwise, it's not everlasting life. And otherwise, you are condemned. You are passed from death unto life. You are a new creature. All right. And why... People have a problem with this is either because they're extremely ignorant or they themselves are not saved. All right, so 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All right, so once you are born of the Spirit of God there is no more condemnation now let's go one more verse uh, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin and that again follows what this says here and shall not come into condemnation you cannot and will not be condemned for anything because you have the Spirit of God in you. And so think about this. Who chooses you? Or do you choose God? You can choose God all day long, but if God don't choose you, you're doomed. But once God does choose you, then you are sealed, secured, saved forever. Nothing can change that. All right, so if we go to Ephesians 
chapter 2, it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. So this is not um, you choosing God, but rather this is God choosing you. All right? You cannot make any claim to being, um, you know, uh, better than anybody else in the sense that you can't say that, well, hey, I'm a good person. You're not a good person. The whole reason why you came to the Lord Jesus Christ is because you know you're not a good person. And you know you need a Savior. And you know that Jesus Christ is that Savior. You can't do it on your own. That's why we come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. So we are not choosing God. I mean, we can choose God, but that doesn't matter. Let's see if I can find a Bible verse when I want to. So there's that. Jesus saying to them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. Um, the one that is a devil is the one that is not saved, never saved, Judas Iscariot. He was never saved. He was chosen to fulfill the scripture, not to be saved. So we go to John 15. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever you shall ask him of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is speaking of everybody that is saved, everybody that is born of the Spirit of God. And don't let deceivers tell you that's only talking about the 11 or 12 that were saved at the time. That's not the context of what Jesus is speaking of here in John 15. If you are the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. All right, and then let me leave you with this. First John, uh, oops, oh, First John, chapter two, starting at verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The will of God is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It, God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance, to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now let's go over John, uh, what we just read in John 15, and then I'll end it. So if I can find it real quickly. Um, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should bring, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. The fruit is what you believe and what you teach. All right, so believing in the Lord Jesus Christ remains forever. Teaching the gospel, good news of the Lord Jesus Christ remains forever. That's the fruit that remains 
All right. Don't let people, deceivers, teach you or tell you that the fruit is going out there and giving money to to the false teacher or whatever. You know. I mean, really, that's what they're they're that's what they will teach. Uh, they won't say it directly because it too obvious, but they will say that you've got to do something in a work style to have good fruit. But no, good fruit is your belief, what you believe and what you teach, what you share with others, has nothing at all to do with giving money to Reverend Schmitty or, you know, donating to, uh, you know, Jerry Lewis kids or whatever, that sort of stuff. There's a lot of good things you can do, but that's not what this means. Your fruit is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ.